says, I'm the vine and you the branches of, of, of John. But th this scripture here has that I helped me so many times, but I, I'm going to start at verse 1, 15 John. You know, we're coming at a time now that true people of faith, the faith's going to be tried. I said, the faith's going to be tried. Father, you bless this word. In the name of Jesus. Lord, they're passing so many laws. It's just a matter of time that you can't buy and sell without the becoming a, a member of the Antichrist church. Lord, we pray you'll keep the people that we preach to and help us reach others. And I pray that other pastors and preachers have warned the folks Don't let them put no chip in their hand or head. Father, in Jesus' name, or anywhere else in their body, God, to buy and sell with. We pray that you'll help us, Lord. You showed me that you're going to get your people through. You got them through the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness. You took care of them, blessed them, gave them water out of a rock, Food out of heaven, bread out of heaven. In Jesus, we know the devil is not going to be able to reign but about three and a half years. And I don't know what's going to happen, but that's the only time you gave him to try to take over the world. Father, we ask you to get us ready for what's next coming. In Jesus' name. If you're abiding me, my words abiding you, you shall ask what you will, and it be done unto you. That's what I want to talk about. And this is a God showed me a long time ago when He first gave me this scripture, and I started seeing this scripture work in my life. And you probably heard it on CDs or tapes or something, maybe in person, how the motors are fixed in trucks, flat tires, were pumped up and drove into town 10 miles with a hole in it. You just drove a stick in it and a tar pumped up. I put a gallon of water in a car and drove to town to, to finish town to get the gas. All these was truth sayings out of my heart and out of the experiences that I had. And this scripture right here was those scriptures. And I'd hold them down before the Lord. I got down on my knees and read the scripture to God. And I said, God, I'm in a mess here. Thank you, Jesus. Glory delivered out of the hands of the communists twice from my life saved I tell you God is still the God that unlocked the jail door for Peter and they was going to kill him the next day and Peter walked out of jail he didn't come through the bars either the Bible said the jail door was open but I didn't use no Danny might and blow the back of the jail out. He believed God. This is after the crucifixion. Ten or twelve years or more after the crucifixion. And Jesus was crucified and resurrected and rose from the dead. It's just today's church folks ain't teaching him, preaching him. This is the kind of scriptures have gotten me through some hard times. Hard times. God is God. I 
tell it often about a little old woman, Portuguese lady, that put her finger on my back getting on the plane behind me. And I was the first to get on the plane. She said, the plane won't crash. Now, man of God on board. More than 1,500 miles, one of them giant motors over that ocean. Fell in the ocean. And we never knew it. Had to land in another country and chain planes. But when we pulled to the gate, the pilot told us what happened. But the little woman in behind me, when she saw who I was, I preached in her country sometime, and she was there. She said, plane won't go down now, man, I got on board. That, that faith. You know, that shows you the faith. There's never been a plane that like that, that, except one that was in World War II, that, that they lost a wing and the right engine. And the pilot, being a Christian, came in on a wing and a prayer, landed in Germany at the base where they took over. Thank God. God's God. He ain't changed. And some or another, if me and you don't learn to live that way, we're going to be going down to the courthouse. We're going to be going down to where the hospitals, the doctors, where they give you that that hypodermic little thing in your hand. It's called a chip or in your head. They already put them in babies, and dogs, cows. People had already, uh, somebody the other day had, had a dog or heard it. Uh, and it was way over yonder somewhere in some other part of the another state and, and because it had that chip in it they saw where it was also a truck driver trying to find him he had a chip in him and his family died way out the west and they checked him he was driving up that interstate going up through Tennessee above Memphis pulling into the gas station right there in that next town. You know. So, you can see it ain't going to be no place to hide. You better keep all them things out of your body because the system set up and the numbers codes there. But if, if God gave me this for that time. God, I know this scripture right here. And, and back over in Matthews, where it said, ask anything in my name, I'll do it. These scriptures have got me through some tough times. You know, trouble folks, they're not living by the scriptures. You have to learn to live. Ask, and it should be given you. Seek, and you should find. Knock, and it should be open to you. For everyone that asks receives. He that seeks finds. To him that knocks, it shall be opened. These are scriptures that. Me and you, as Christians, need to be learning to live by. I had an experience with the Lord back in some of the early days that I saw these tough times and terrible times. And you know who got through it? People that live by the Scripture. People that live by the scriptures. I do my best to live by the scriptures. You know, they said Hank Williams, you know, I, I was, I saw 
that when he died, I told the people, I was in South Carolina, that he was going to die and saw him going up that right out of Nashville, going up across eastern Tennessee, and saw him, they found him dead up there. And I saw it. But you know why he died? He wrote a song. I live by the songs I wrote. And he wrote drunk songs, sin songs. And he died by the songs he wrote. I live to the best of I can. God help me strive by the gospel I preach. You don't just preach it. You live it. You live it. This book, this Bible, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, it'll get you through. It'll get you through the Antichrist. Honestly. It will get you through times. Or who wants to eat and drink three and a half years? Just through taking a, a chip in your hand or head. I don't. God can't provide because after that three and a half years not too many years after that people has got that number in their hand didn't say own them in a lot of preachers preach if it's on you didn't say nothing about being on nothing and and just in the last 10, 12 years they've made a chip and put your whole life story in it and put it inside of your body they're already putting uh, chips and cows and hogs and sheep People can't steal them no more. They know where they're at. Know where they're at. And I'll tell you that the government's going to know where you are. But God, if you true to Him, He will take care of you. If you'll live for him and keep living for him, don't lose your cool. Don't, 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 don't kick out. You know, some folks when pressure comes, they they bail out. They bail out. People lost good families because they they got in arguments and couldn't handle it bailed out. Instead of trying to resolve their problems, they, 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 they bailed out. And they went and messed up with somebody else, and it was worse than that than it was what they had. You better try to work things out in your life and let God help you because just going up here, making these quick decisions, that's what people are going to do. One, one man told me, but he died. And I said, you won't even live. He used to work with me, travel with me. He said, what I'll do, I'll go ahead and take the chip, and I'll go out and back and get me a knife and cut it out. I said, no, you won't either. I said, the moment you allow him to put that chip in your hand ahead, as far as God's concerned, your name done been blotted out of the book of life. God said, he that overcomes the beast and he that overcomes these antichrist times, I have what? Look what's that. He didn't write that over in the gospel. He wrote that over where all this stuff is coming on us. We're going through these times uh, of these this seven years or three and a half or what it is. That's when he wrote that. That he that overcomes who? 
the beast, he that overcome the false Christ, I will not blot his name out of the book of life. Are these little previous things that, that people do, you know, the little freebish things that people do. Uh, you know, you, you, a lot of people just plan give up on God because they go through some little crazy trial. God, uh, uh, He done turned against me now. God ain't never turned against nobody. You know, somebody asked Jesus, might have been Peter, said, Lord, if a man sins, how many times will you forgive him? Seven times? What did Jesus say? Seventy times seven. And that's a lot of sevens. And, and that's just an estimation. That's what Jesus said, as long as he repents, that's what he's saying. Said, I'll forgive any sin, but don't never say nothing against the Holy Ghost. If that's involved, that'll never be forgiven. Whatever you do, don't ever get mad at the Holy Ghost. Get mad at me, get mad at anybody else, but don't get mad at the Holy Ghost. Because I tell you, just keep your mouth shut. Can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Go out there and get you a mule biscuit, a horse biscuit, put it in your mouth, and it'll keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> How do you like that one? <laughs> Glory. Better that. And a mess up, ain't it? I mean, no, it's better to stick a rock in your mouth. Oh, what did he say about it? Well, he said, you put a, a bottle in a horse's mouth to what? To control him. He's telling me and you to learn how to control our mouths because some point, you know, we're going to go through something. One of these days, you know, just going ahead and giving people peace of mind and all kind of bad languages with it, uh, you'd love us to get in there pretty close to crossing over that line, saying it's your word, putting God in it, you know, and people put, start putting them, putting God in it, putting that deep behind it, you know. God just might do it. That's dangerous to ask God to do that to you. And that's what you're saying every time you say that word. You're telling God to totally damn your soul. And that's what you don't need to, to do. And But if you abide in Him, we're coming up to a time that, that we are actually going to live with this right here. He said, I'm the vine. You. You're not on your own. I'm not on my own. We have God backing us all the way. I said, we have God backing us all the way. If, uh, I've told people, you'll highway do right. God will help you. If you'll strive to do right. You know, it ain't always this, you know, when I pray, I like to really pray like I'm on fire preaching. Some people, if they ain't praying like that, they won't pray. But pray ain't just an, an 
It was this. Let me tell you right now, God reached way down and saved this old boy. This old boy was lost. He was on the way to hell. And God reached way down and saved this. That ain't always anointed. But ain't nothing but a hacker. A lot of people think it. Ain't nothing but a hacker. Why well, these, these people get out here and do these movies and make all kind of movies. Some of them even supposed to be religious movies, and they'll get up there and do that. And that guy, he, he probably slept with somebody else, one of the uh, movie star filmers that night. And he's making that movie the next day, and he's out there uh, pretending he's a hacking like a preacher. You seen that guy that, that made that movie about the preacher? Well, he lived like the devil. You know, and he made it because he knew a preacher that lived that kind of life. Y'all remember that movie that hit big for a while? Well, let me tell you something. That ain't the way God lives. That ain't the way His people live. You got to get something down in you and abide in me. And my words abide in you. I've heard that since I was a kid. You abide in me, and my words abide in you. You, ye, you shall ask what you will, and God will help you through. I don't care how you look at your situation. God don't look at you like I look at you, and he don't look at you like somebody else looks at you. God looks at your heart. God looks at your heart. Your heart is what God looks at. I don't say God don't keep up with the rest of it, but God sees your intentions. He sees your emotions. You know, He sees how that, that people push you and push you and push you and pressure you and pressure you. You know, He takes everything. I'm the vine, my father's a husband man. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he take it away. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, prunes it, cleans it, trims it, digs about it. And now they have a, in our day, they, they shoot something other, you know, in it. So like they're putting a hypodermic needle in us, but they got a different way that makes it all false stuff, you know, stealth of it, that it may be, bring forth more fruit. You got to prune yourself. You know, that's what people don't do. Preachers don't do. Christians don't do. Prune themselves. You know, you got to dig about it. You remember the parable Jesus gave? It didn't burn no fruit, didn't burn no fruit, didn't burn no fruit. And the caretaker, the owner, said, we're just going to cut it down. Three years I come looking for some peaches and wasn't none, for some apples and wasn't any, some grapes and wasn't any. What did he say? What did the, 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 the Jesus man say? What did the farmer say? What did the caretaker say? See, Jesus is our farmer. He's our overseer. He's our... He's our guide. He's our dig about it. What do you say? Let us dig about it. Don't do it this year. This is in the fall. You, you, you root up that stuff in the fall, and by December or summer's in there, you start replanting the new, new tree. He said, just don't bother it. Let me dig about it. Let me water 